Finally, confirmation from the Ugandan military. Yes, it's true. The boys are coming home. Uh, as I speak now, the chief of land forces is in uh, Juba, working out the details and the modalities of the disengagement and the withdrawal of the troops. Just last week, Kampala insisted its troops would stay in South Sudan until a regional force came in to replace them. Now the government has decided South Sudan can secure its own capital with help from UN peacekeepers. We have discussed this in detail with the government of South Sudan and uh, we think that they are up by now they, are, they have uh, upped up their business. We think they'll be able to take over the statute of Juba. Uganda sent in up to 3,000 soldiers in December 2013 following a request from South Sudan's President Salva Kiir. Uganda's government insists they prevented what it's calling a genocide. Kiir's opponents say the Ugandans merely were trying to save the president from defeat. The Ugandans' presence was a key sticking point in peace talks. And under the peace deal signed in August, the Ugandans were given until 10th October to pull out. Experts say it's now up to both sides in South Sudan to show commitment to peace. So after that, after the transitional period, possibly we are going to see a structure or structures which are going to stand the test of time. Because I think what South Sudan has been lacking are very strong institutions of state which, which can withstand the disagreements which, which, which arise among the political elites. So the hope is that this time round, this can work. The Ugandan army says it's lost just nine soldiers throughout the conflict. Tens of thousands of South Sudanese are thought to have died. The last Ugandan troops are expected to leave South Sudan in the first week of November. It's hoped that the warring parties of President Salva Kiir and rebel leader Riyak Mashar will now solve their differences, putting an end to months of conflict. Isabel Nakiria, CCTV, Kampala.